Fermenting is all the rage right now. A quick Google will turn up all kinds of recipes from fermenting everything from carrots to the more traditional cabbage. You'll find all kinds of different ways of doing things. And most recipes today, they don't call for a crock like in days gone by, but it's on a smaller scale. So maybe those recipes will explain how to ferment a small amount that you just store in your refrigerator like using a, a glass mason jar. In days gone by, fermenting was a real method that people used to preserve food to put up for the winter, just like they would dry things or can things. And of course, they did this all over in lots of areas all over the world, in fact, but I can only speak to Appalachia because that's the culture that I'm from. But in days gone by, people in Appalachia, they fermented large quantities of things. They used a crock. I have a, a small one here. So this is one. I, I love this one because it is small and I can pick it up easily. But they would use really big crocks. I have, we have a few in the basement. We're lucky enough to have one of the, my husband, the deer hunter, and one of his grandmothers, which is really precious. The things with those big crocks is they're hard to deal with because once they're full of food, they're heavy. And then they easily get cracks in them and then your stuff seeps out. But in days gone by, they needed that many, that much food. Like for my family of four, of course, we're not fermenting enough food to make it all through the winter because we're blessed to live in the times that we do. But in those days, they needed to ferment as many uh, crocks as they could to help them get through the winter. Typical things that they, they would ferment was mostly cabbage, so they'd make sauerkraut, also pickled beans and corn, or a mixture of pickled beans and corn, so you've got the corn and the green beans and cabbage and pepper, so um, sometimes people mix things up together. My father-in-law, Papa Tony, he come from a large family, there was eight children in his family, and he told me that his mother would do several crocks of fermented things, kraut, pickled beans and corn, throughout the summer, and she would can them. Once the fermenting process is over, you can actually put them in jars, and, and um, in the old days, they did the open kettle method, which is where they just had everything hot, but today you would use the uh, bullion water canner and then you would can them for the appropriate amount of time and then put them on your shelf. Well he said that she would do that all through the summer but those last few crocks full of food she would actually just leave in the crock whatever it was if it was uh, sauerkraut or if it was pickled beans and corn and then the family would eat that first they would eat straight out of, cro out of the crock so when that was all gone then they would turn to the jars that they had already sitting on the shelves in the can house where they kept their things but he told me a really funny story um, one time of course when he was a little boy running around he knew about those crocks in the summer where he knew where they were kept and he knew where they were at and his mother when she made sauerkraut she also pickled or fermented the core of the cabbage so she would just cut out the core and put it down in with the other chopped up cabbage so he knew those cores were in there and he liked them so he said he would be out running around playing having a big time and he'd get hungry he didn't want to go in the house he would sneak in there and reach his dirty little hand down in among all that cabbage till he found a core and then he'd pull it out and eat it and he said he could remember that he would look at his arm and then it would be clean where he'd stuck it down in that fermented brine you know it would his hand while he was getting him a snack. Of course, he said if his mother had known that he did that, he'd get the beating of his life. But anyway, he really uh, chuckled when he told me about that. You could tell it was a good memory that he had from childhood. So the other thing about fermenting in Appalachia is that people go by the signs. So I'm by no means an expert on the zodiac signs, but the zodiac signs, each month has a sign. Everyone knows that about their horoscope and all those different things. But each sign is also related to a body part. So you'll hear people often in Appalachia say, you can't um, pickle. They, sometimes they call fermenting pickling. It's kind of interchangeable. But actually fermenting, it only takes the vegetable and the salt and then nature ferments it. Pickling it actually usually typically uses vinegar and usually some type of sugar or something, but at least vinegar. So that's true pickling. But in Appalachia, often you'll hear, like I said, the pickled beans and corn. You even heard me say it. But it's truly fermenting, that is. It's not pickling, it's fermenting. But anyway, so all you'll need is your item and your salt. So if it's sauerkraut, you need the cabbage and the salt. Or if it's pickled beans and corn, you need the corn, the green beans, and if you're going to add cabbage, and the salt. And that's how you make it, how you mix it all up. But there's other things, like I was talking about the signs. You need to make sure it's in the right sign. So in my family, uh, Granny and Pap, when they believed this is what had been handed down through their family, is when you were going to ferment, you need to make sure the sign was in the head. 
So that's, if you don't have it in the head, then your ferment may not work and your stuff may rot in the crock or in the jar or whatever you're using. Well, when I got married, it just turned out that my husband's family, although they're from a different county, about three counties away, Haywood County, they also believed in fermenting in the head. So that was easy for me and Matt. We both agreed that's when you ferment, it's when the sign's in the head. Other people I've heard say they prefer other signs. Um, I think one of Matt's uncles, or Matt's aunts, excuse me, she would prefer to pickle or to ferment when the sign is in the heart. That's like when she wants to make hers. But the head seems to work for us, and that is a pretty common one. I've heard other people say that as well. So that's one thing you always need to make sure if you're following Appalachian ways that you make sure where the sign is before you ferment. Another one that I grew up hearing, and also Matt grew up hearing, and is, is fairly common, is that when you are fermenting things, if there's a lady in the house or a girl helping, they're not supposed to help you when it's that time of the month, because it can cause your ferment not to work. Now, I don't know for sure if that's true or not, but if you've just decided that you're gonna make uh, 50 pounds of sauerkraut, I'm not gonna, I've never thought, well, I'll take a chance and just find out and see if it's true or not, because you'd hate to think about all that food going to waste. But that's another common thing that you'll hear, that if a, a lady or a girl is on her monthlies, then she does not need to help when it comes to fermenting uh, food items for, for winter use. In a little bit, I'm going to show you one of my favorite fermented recipes I actually come from a reader from the Blind Pig and the Acorn, Cheryl. She sent it to me several years ago, and it's actually a fermented chow chow recipe. And it's handed down through her family in West Virginia, and she makes it every year. And since she's given it to me, I make it every year. It's really good in the wintertime with cornbread and beans, soup beans and cornbread. Uh, it's also good as a side with other dishes, even on a salad. I've even eaten it like that before. But the best thing about it that I really like, and she liked it for the same reason, she said, is because it's like an end of season recipe. So end of the garden kind of thing. So you just kind of make it out of what you got on hand. Maybe you've got a cabbage, maybe you've got some peppers, you've got some green tomatoes, and you just kind of make a combination of that and then you ferment it. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. The name of this fermented recipe is Grandma Ida's Chow Chow. As I said, I got the recipe from a reader of The Blind Pig and the Acorn. It's an unusual recipe for chow chow because it's fermented. Most chows are pickled with vinegar. To make the chow chow, you need five pounds of equal amounts of garden vegetables. Cabbage, peppers, cucumbers, and green tomatoes is what I use. I usually have more cucumbers than other items, and the recipe still works out. You'll need three tablespoons of non-iodized salt. You'll need a weight of some sort to keep the mixture submerged. I've used a small pint jar filled with water and sealed, set on a bread plate or on several overlaid saucers, and I've also used a plastic bag filled with water. Some people use a rock. They have a rock that they keep really clean, they scrubbed it really well, and that's the rock they use to submerge items that they're fermenting. You'll need a hand chopper, a knife, or a food processor. This go around, I just used a knife and chopped everything up as I went. Often, if I'm in a hurry, I'll throw it all in the food processor. If you do use a processor, you have to really keep an eye on the mixture because cucumbers and peppers can quickly become mush. You'll need grape leaves for covering the mixture. Grape leaves have tannins in them that help keep the vegetables crisp as they ferment. You can use leaves from the cabbage if you don't have any grape leaves. I have several grape vines, so getting grape leaves are easy for me, but using cabbage leaves from the cabbage you chop up will work just fine. If you know someone who has grape vines, I bet they'll let you have a few leaves. You'll need a crock of some type. I'm lucky to have several crocks, but I know they can be downright expensive to buy. I've heard you can use plastic food grade containers to ferment in, but I've never used one myself. Folks say you can get food grade containers for free at some restaurants if you ask for them. I found an excellent deal on glass canisters earlier this year and picked up several. I've used them for my fermenting this summer and they've worked out great. Cheryl, who shared this recipe with me, had a super ideal for crocs. She keeps an eye out at thrift stores and yard sales for crock pot inserts. If you think about it, they are very similar to a real crock. 
As I mentioned before, it's also best if you make fermented foods in the right sign. We always make fermented things when the signs are in the head. A quick Google will probably tell you what sign it is. Especially helpful is a zodiac-based planning calendar. In my area, funeral homes and banks often give them out for free at the beginning of a new year. The zodiac calendars are also handy if you plant your garden by the signs. Start layering the vegetables into your container as you get them chopped up. Sprinkle a little of the three tablespoons of salt on each layer and massage with your hand as you push down. Once you have chopped all the vegetables, continue to work the chow until enough liquid comes out to cover the mixture when it's pushed down. This doesn't take long since peppers and cucumbers have so much liquid in them. When there's enough liquid to cover the chow, place your grape leaves or cabbage leaves on top and tuck the edges down between the wall of the container and the chow. Set your weight on top and then cover the container and set it in a place out of the way. I've never not had enough liquid, but if you don't have enough to cover your vegetables, you can make a brine of one teaspoon of non-iodized salt per cup of water. Keep an eye on the chow, but it should be ready in 14 to 21 days, and it's totally normal for there to be a little scum or mold on top of the mixture. Just scoop it off and throw it away. If the mixture truly goes bad, you'll know it by the smell. Fermented things have a nice, clean, almost a yeasty smell with no decaying undertones. Once the chow is fermented, you can put it in your fridge and eat it until it's all gone, it will continue to ferment slowly in the fridge and last several weeks like that. Or if you'd like to put it in jars, you drain the liquid and bring it to a hard boil. Then you pack chow, the chow in sterilized jars and then fill it with the hot liquid. You seal and process in a water bath for 10 minutes. Fermented items are full of good probiotics, but the water bath process will likely kill most of them off. Another alternative is to put part of the chow in the fridge and can the rest, that way you get the benefit of eating fresh fermentation for your body, but you also get to put up food for the winter that's shelf stable. I hope you enjoyed this little piece on fermenting, and if you have a favorite fermented recipe that's been handed down through your family or you've discovered along the way, I hope you'll leave it in the comments and tell us about it. I also hope that you'll share this video with your friends and neighbors and that you'll subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But mostly, I just hope that you'll drop back by often as I celebrate Appalachia.